so I just wanted to make a quick video you know about you know I get a few comments from people like you know with different levels of like suffering you know some people say that like they're worse than others or that uh, you know their symptoms are more intense than others yeah it's true you know some people come off cold turkey and they put a huge shock to their brain like I did you know and they experience long-term you know neurological dysfunctional symptoms you know so you know some people just like taper forever you know I've seen people that taper over the amount of years and some people do it you know like they cut every two weeks and then some people up those because they can't take it you know so the level of suffering yeah it is different but it's all the same because I've seen people suffer immensely for a long period of time and then they recover kind of like what happened with me you know my withdrawal went on and on and on and on until finally like you know something clicked and something changed and then you have the people that you know they they suffer you know but it's not so bad but it, it goes on and on for years and years and then you have like the small amount of people that are in like the protracted group that go on for many years and they still have like major issues you know but I see that that's rare there's a very small minority of people that have that you know and I really you know I feel for them you know but um you know we just have to keep you know the hope alive that eventually you know they'll get better you know and uh you know some people believe you know that uh you know they're harmed forever you know i believe that uh you know some of my muscle symptoms but you know are probably never gonna go away you know especially with the the twitching that i have and my muscles a little spasms like I'll just look at my arm and it'll look like something is inside of it like just like out of nowhere like I'll have a great day and I'll be feeling good and then like I won't even have anxiety and then all of a sudden I'll just get like twitches and then especially when I'm laying in bed like I'll jerk so bad and I still have that you know I still have the jerks and I know it's from benzo withdrawal because I never had it on benzos and I never had it before that. So I just didn't develop the myoclonosis jerks, you know, which I did have a lot of, you know, in my, you know, withdrawal, you know, when I was really, really going through it. I had a lot of severe muscle symptoms where my muscles would move all day long uncontrollably to where it was visible, where people would actually, you know, if I was laying in my bed or whatever, uh, my mom would be able to see like my muscles trembling and moving. And, you know, finally, whenever, you know, she finally believed me when she saw what was happening, you know, I had a twitch in my eye, they call it bleeperal spasm. I mean, I just had every symptom in the book from muscles, you know, and, you know, I believe that, you know, I might have those issues for a long, long time. You know, some people say, oh, it's a potassium deficiency, a magnesium deficiency, it's none of that because I take all my supplements and I, I, um, I have a pretty clean diet and uh, I've had several different panels taken for blood for any vitamin deficiencies that I've had. So I don't believe that it's any of that. Uh, I, I know that, you know, my muscles still haven't recovered and it's been five years. But other than that, I don't have any other really symptoms of withdrawal. But, um, you know, like back to what I was saying, I feel for the people that are far out. I watch some of the videos from people and, you know, some people don't like me, you know? Some people don't agree with what I say. But, you know, I maybe I don't agree what they say, you know? But um, I don't really care if people like me or not. You know, I come on for these videos to help people. I come here to uh, basically, you know, give people hope from the agony that I went through, you know? And when I was in withdrawal, I hated people like me because I'm like, look at this guy. 
he's all happy, he went through withdrawal, everything is okay, da, 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 da. but I suffered immensely, I paid my dues, you know, so it wasn't like, you know, that I just got off the pills and everything was okay, you know, I knew in the beginning when I was going to come off of Xanax, I knew that I was going to have a hard time, because for many years, I tried to get off of them, and I couldn't, and there would be several times like one time I couldn't get my prescription and I ran out so it was like three days or two days without them and I would just be so like I would go to like work and I would just be like I couldn't do anything like I would just like people would be talking and I would hear like weird sounds and I couldn't move properly and I would drop things and I was so clumsy and the minute I took a Xanax everything went back to normal you know so I knew coming off of them I was gonna have a major problem but I didn't know I didn't realize what was gonna happen to me and uh, you know I didn't know that I was gonna have such debilitating symptoms and it was just gonna go on and on and on and months and months and year after year I didn't know that it was gonna happen because to be 100% honest with you guys, I would have never came off if I would have knew what I was going to go through. But, you know, after 13 years of taking them, you know, as prescribed by my doctor, and, you know, sometimes I did updose a little bit more on my own. I did a little bit of self-medicating. I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh, I went exactly by the doctor's rules because Xanax helped me. So, you know... After many years, I tried to get more from the doctor. I don't think because I wanted to, like, get a buzz or anything. I just think that, you know, I didn't know about tolerance. And I didn't know, you know, that they weren't working anymore. So I thought that I just needed more, you know. If you guys have been on benzos for a while, you know what I mean. One Xanax doesn't work, so then you need another one. So I, I started off with, you know, one milligram. And it helped me out. And then after like, you know, a short period of time, I would need another one in the afternoon. So then I was on one milligram in the morning and one milligram in the afternoon. And then I would go to my doctor again. And then that doctor said, no, no more. And he cut me off completely. So like, I was like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to get sick. And he's like, no, you're just drug seeking. So he cut me off completely. So then I had to do what I had to do to get my, my Xanax. So I had to buy them in the street, you know, which really I shouldn't have done, but I wasn't going to get sick. So I would have to buy them, you know, the wrong way, you know, not looking for a high or anything, but I would just have to like, you know, I didn't want to go through the, the feeling of, you know, not having my Xanax, you know. So then when I went to another doctor and I told them, look, I was on four milligrams a day. And I told him, I said, this is it. Either you give me the Xanax or I'm going to fucking buy them on the street. So you have two options. I could come here and get a legal prescription because they helped me. Or I'm going to not come here and I'm going to go spend my money that I was going to pay you to a drug dealer. So guess what? The doctor, I guess, realized that, uh, you know, <laughs> he was going to lose out. As we all know, they're legal drug dealers. So he gave me two, two milligrams every day. And that went on for a long time. And, you know, I got to a point where I only needed one, two milligram in the morning and a half at night, you know. And when I would have like a long day or whatever, I would take the other half because I used to be able to split them into fours. So, you know, it was just, I don't think I was ever looking for like that euphoric feeling I was just looking to you know feel better I didn't want to get high I never took a whole bunch of them at once I never did any of that you know but I just you know I didn't want to go through the feeling of not having them because they just from not having them they just debilitated me I, I wouldn't be able to go to work I wouldn't be able to get out of bed I, I just my brain wouldn't function I just wouldn't be able to function at all without them like if I knew that I was like running low on my prescription, I would start freaking out and I would try to call the doctor and squeeze in and go to the pharmacy and then they would say, oh, I can't get them. And I would be like, well, I only have four left and I can't get them for three days. So the morning I'm going to feel bad. And it just, it was just like a never ending nightmare of those pills having control of my life, 
you know? So it was like, what do I do, you know? Do, do I get off of them or whatever? So I said, the year before I came off in 2015, I said, I'm gonna try to like gradually taper myself off. And that didn't work. So I was on three milligrams a day and I tried to break one of those in a half or a quarter and I just, it just, I couldn't do it with the Xanax. Not knowing that I'd probably needed to cross over to volumes or something that was longer acting. You know, I was just constantly trying to like cut down until finally I said, fuck it, I'm gonna just go through it. And I should have never did that because I just basically tapered off for seven days and all fucking hell broke loose. Like I just... I don't even, I don't even want to think about that. It's just the worst time of my life for so long. And uh, now that I'm rambling on and telling you guys my story, if you guys don't like me, don't fucking watch my videos. Keep it moving. I come here to help you people. I come here to give people hope that you will recover eventually. I don't know when, nobody knows when. By going to the benzo groups and posting your symptoms and asking the same questions over and over, you're never going to get a right answer. People are just going to tell you whatever they know and that's it. You're going to get, I used, I literally used to go to the benzo groups and post the question and I would get 20 different answers and it was just like, when am I going to get better? 18 months you'll get better. Oh, after a year you'll start to feel better. I turned the corner at two years. Oh, I haven't got better in five years. Oh, I'm still sick at seven years. Oh, I got better in three months. You'll be okay. Oh, I tapered off and I'm fine. So, I mean, by going to the groups over and over and constantly looking for an answer, you're not going to find an answer that you want. You're just going to get a comment from somebody and more than likely they're just either telling you something to make you feel better or they're just like, you know, they're just you know, giving you an, a, a comment. That's all it is. So anyway, guys, be strong. You're gonna get better. Keep it moving, you know, cut your pills slow. Don't cold turkey. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Peace, guys.